Okay, I'm going to talk to you about um, how I accidentally distributed a massive security vulnerability to thousands of websites. Um, so if you think you're making mistakes while learning to code, uh, you probably didn't mess up as badly as I did. So this is that story. <clears throat> this is back in the uh, early 90s, or late 90s. Uh, so 99, 2000, I started programming at a very young age. I was 13, 14 years old when I started. Went through GeoCities. Uh, this is kind of the frame of ref reference for all of this. So I made some really cool uh, designs when I was young. <laughs> Obviously, all of these were table-based with image rollovers that were preloaded with JavaScript and uh, was working on a flash, you know, side menu, as one does. <laughs> so I decided, um, I wrote a lot of PHP. I started in PHP. Uh, I did that for... Uh, years and years and years, probably 12 years uh, professionally. Um, so that's, that's most of my early programming background. This is back uh, in the days where you could either choose to put something in a CGI bin or do PHP and like upload with F SFTP. So I decided to create this distributable script called Tsar News. <coughs> and um, Tsar is like the Russian king, so it was like cool, uh, you know, King News something. So <coughs> I thought it was cool anyways. So I created this script where you could it was basically an admin panel. You could it was an installable script back when people had shared servers and actually put like PHP stuff in their websites, uh, you know, vBulletin, uh, WordPress uh, sites. Uh, I mean, tons of people still use WordPress. Uh, probably one of the only survivors of those kinds of days uh, for distribution methods. But uh, if you wanted like a comment section or whatever, you would just find a PHP script to do it, like throw it on your site, include it, and, uh, and go on about your merry way. So this was a news thing, so I said, why isn't there an includable news uh, program that you could just include news where you want? So I built basically what is an admin panel that had the option to include the news on your website. So basically in your website, you would just drop this code that would include the news feed in your website right where you wanted it. So this is, again, back before modern JavaScript. Now this would probably just be a JavaScript snippet and then they'd uh, dynamically load it or something. This is PHP days, so it was all server done. So this code is pretty innocent, right? Or at least I thought. So the problem with this code is uh, PHP had this thing back in PHP 3 and 4 called register globals. And I had no idea what this is. I'll explain this in a minute. But so basically what you do is you define your path, the path to where you installed Tsar News, and then you would include the news file. And then that news file would actually look at this uh, tpath variable to include other files, like configuration, database connection, all that kind of stuff. So pretty innocent. PHP had register globals. What this means is that in that news PHP file, that tpath variable that I was looking for, um, if you had register globals on, which most shared hosts did at the time, it's a language level configuration setting, um, <clears throat> it would create that variable locally if you put it in a query string. <laughs> Pretty genius idea, right? For thank you, PHP. They, by the way, they say on this in the last sentence, uh, <laughs> this uh, this page will explain how one can write insecure code with this directive. But keep in mind that the directive itself isn't insecure, but rather the misuse of it. I strongly disagree. <laughs> so this news.php file that's being included, if you put a tpath variable and you put a different URL in there, there's a combination of two vulnerabilities here. This, the first is register globals, what I, which I went over. The second one is uh, remote file uh, includes. You could actually configure PHP to include a file from a remote server, and that was on by default on most PHP configurations at the time. Completely blows my mind how insecure that was uh, back in the day. Nothing like that anymore, thankfully. Uh, like I said, it, it has a big notice up here that this has been removed from the language. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> So uh, this got me on the uh, list of Secuina, uh, which is like they put out big security bull uh, <laughs> bulletins. This is basically the highest level of security vulnerability that you can write. <laughs> it's, it's, it's full remote script execution uh, attack vector, no authentication required, <laughs> low complexity. <laughs> so I did a pretty good job at writing really insecure shitty code. So um, it affected thousands of websites that were using this. I had to publish a new version. Of course, that day there wasn't, you know, NPM versions that you could just release a new version and people would like get it. People had to like manually go look for the version, 
download it. I wasn't collecting email addresses so I couldn't notify anyone. And it became a big, uh, became a big de deal. There's probably still sites out there that haven't been updated in like 15 years with this on there. So I'm sorry if you used my script. <laughs> I'm very sorry. So uh, everyone makes mistakes while learning. Just don't be afraid of uh, making a few of your own. You probably won't mess up as badly as I did. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.